Hello everyone, welcome to Talk of Fame podcast. I'm Kylie Montigny as your host and today we have Estevina Soto who is an ambassador to the Women Economic Forum, Caribbean TV host, actress and model has been part of Miss Universe Puerto Rico 2020. She began her actor career in late 2021 and was cast as Camila in Fox's Basically, Island in season two in February 2022, and also following performance at the International Miss Universe 2020 competition, in which she placed in the top 10, she worked as an investigate journalist and developed as a TV host for several local TV network shows. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. It's so an honor to have you. Thank you so much for taking our time. Thank you, Kylie, for such a wonderful introduction. I'm very excited to be here. So I'm ready. I'm ready to talk a little bit with you and let the world know what is it that I do and where do I come from? <laughs> yes, of course. So in 2020, you participated in the Miss Universe Puerto Rico. Like, how did you kind of prepare for the pageant? Was that your first like pageant or did you, was, like, you did some things before? Actually, it was my very first pageant. I always loved modeling in general, like high fashion and runways, but I was never interested in, in pageantry. Somehow life, you know, gave me a 360 change and I became interested in the platform because I realized it was a platform not only to celebrate women physically, but women like, you know, entirely as uh, capable uh, people and individuals in a lot of different aspects. So I was very interested in competing and the preparation, of course, it's, um, it, it's, it's, there are multiple aspects that you need to prepare for uh, when you go into these platforms. So of course, a lot of people know these platforms uh, as, okay, these are models and they look pretty and blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot of other aspects like physical stuff. I mean, um, intellectual things, uh, psychological things that you really need to get used to and to get ready for in order for you to present yourself. So at the beginning, I was very excited. I started working like four months prior to do the casting. And that focus in training was more into, you know, uh, working out physically um, and trying to get to the to the body shape that I wanted to be in order to present myself. Later on, as the uh, experience developed, the focus was more into learning how to create the image that I wanted to give in terms of hair and makeup. And then my favorite preparation part was actually when we were coming nearer to the final night, you know, there's this um, part where the jury asks questions. So there's also a lot of preparation in terms of, you know, what's going on in the world? What are my opinions in different topics and subjects in society right now? So there's a lot of studying research. So it's a very well-rounded preparation that we all have to go through. Oh, yeah. Like, I didn't expect, like, you had to kind of, like, work out and all those things to be in that pageant. I never knew that was kind of, like, the process of it. Yeah, it's a little bit, um, it's about constructing what is the image that you want to give and what is the message that you want to put forth. In my case, it was clear to me that even though there's a big aspect of the glamorous part of it and being a model, there is also a big opportunity to bring a message. And I was very interested in starting a discussion on how women can both be interested in both fashion stuff and be glamorous mm -hmm. and you know and the most simple things that you would think are not important at all in life but also be capable of having an opinion and you know developing your critical thinking so for me it was very important that i would tackle uh, you know that rounded training so not only the physical aspect of it and the makeup and the dress but also how i speak in front of people and how i inspire the communities Mm -hmm. Like what the whole dress is in a pageant, like did you choose it yourself or did you like the people head of the pageant choose it for you? So you have a lot of freedom when you compete in these kinds of platforms. In my case, I had a group of people that were guiding me and we were constructing sort of the image that I wanted to give. I wanted to look like a, a very elegant woman. So we worked together. I had a lot of um, freedom in order to decide, yeah. you know, what color and how I wanted to look and how I wanted to perceive myself. So it's also a very creative process for all of us. Mm, like, do you like, do you, it's like, what's, I'm kind of curious, like, does like the way you dress play a massive role in the way you get, um, you win or is it like, oh, I rather just like 
dress the way I am to help others and in order to see myself as a person type of thing. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You know, uh, it depends. I This whole dress code, it's just like for our daily lives. There are certain moments and certain spaces, depending on the event, that we need to adjust that dress code, right? Forever, mm -hmm. if we ever go to an interview or if we are at a party with friends or at a wedding of a family member, we would adjust that dress code. So for the pageants, it's the same. So choosing the gown, it's just uh, it's a response to the dress code of a final night where you present yourself in that gown, right? Um, it does not make a huge impact in terms of they will not give you points or take less points if they like or don't like your dress. But it is really important that you know who you are that you know what kind of style you have, what fits you good, what doesn't fit you better, so that you can present yourself the best that you can, so that you can, you know, make a good impact. Mm -hmm. Like, are you originally from Puerto Rico or are you going I to- I am originally from Puerto Rico, yeah. My entire family members are all born and raised in Puerto Rico. And it's been a blessing to, you know, come from a small island and get to represent uh, all the talent that comes from there. So I'm very proud. <laughs> like I'm like I like I literally used to convince my parents to take me to Puerto Rico when I was a little kid. And I oh, saw did you ever like, go or not yet? I never went, but I'm still dying to go. I used oh, to you have like, to, you oh, have to. Mom, Dad, like I know you've been thinking about going on vacation. Like you go to Puerto Rico, and you're like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's it's time to go. It's time to go. You're gonna love it. There's a lot of things to do, and I think it's good. You know that. Uh, People from the United States usually are not really clear in terms of what relationship politically they have in terms of Puerto Rico and the USA because we are US citizens. So yeah. it's interesting. I'd say I would recommend for everyone to visit. We are happy to welcome all of you and uh, very excited to show you to show you our culture and what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. Like I like with, with what pictures I see in videos, it's just so beautiful. Like yes. like the beaches and everything. I'm like, God, just go there for a week by myself and it's like <laughs> chill out and travel because any like any excuse I get to travel is like a minimum. I'm like any like whatever someone's like, oh, do you want to go to and do a day trip to Florida or something? I'm yeah. like, oh yeah. Go. but it's like with puerto rico it's just beautiful like i feel like you need to stay there for at least like a week or two to yes actually definitely actually you could you could enjoy a week in the capital but if you can stay two weeks and you'll be good but a week is okay too i hope you can come visit one day definitely and like how does it feel to kind of set like an example for young girls in miss universe puerto rico wow it's an amazing feeling it's an amazing feeling but more than you know thinking of the aspect of you have this you have a bunch of eyes on you yeah um and that's an opportunity to show who you are what's your personality but most importantly it's a huge opportunity to set an example it feels like a huge responsibility because the platform miss universe has always been um known for you know the physical aspect of how beautiful a woman is but if you go deeper and in depth in, and understand what is it that every girl goes through when they come into these stages and you quickly see it's a lot more than just a glamorous aspect it's about developing leaders for the communities and so in that sense i know that i've, I've got a lot of women and, and girls that are looking up to me all the things that I post uh, on my Instagram, for example, I am very careful of what it is that I post. I'm very careful that um, the things that I share really are an example of how I think about women development. So it, it, it is an amazing feeling, but it's also very important to clarify it that it does come with a big, big, big responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because like, as a gay woman, especially in this universe, like you basically, have to kind of watch like what you post and what you say, whether it's on social media or even the pageant itself. Like because there's plenty of women watching, and they're like, "Okay, well, I like this person, and I want to like I want to see what she says. So I can watch what she does. So I can do that too. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like when you do those pageants, and when um people are looking to get into them, like they're worried kind of about like the atmosphere of like Miss Universe and pageants because I know like, pageants not just Miss Universe but like, maybe it's like a small competition or whatever it's like a local Miss 
let's just say Luzerne County or something, you're like a small competition for the county you live in. It's like no matter how small it is, whether it's like a local type of thing, like it can just be so what's the word I'm looking for? Like a it's basically very hard to do things with being that pageant. Like it's very difficult and very hard to do things because you have other girls that can be cocky and be some yeah. like well, I'm better than you because of uh, the way I'm wearing, I have more experience, that type of thing. It's yeah, very, yeah. Strict, like, very strict. Yeah, I think that's also part of this idea, the general idea that the general public and the general audiences have of these kinds of pageants. It's important to say also that for a long time now, they are no longer referred to as beauty pageants, but just uh, platforms for women's development, platform for competition between women and not necessarily for the beauty aspect. There's a lot of things that I wish people would would know, you know, about the development, the growth, the sisterhood that is really created when you go through these types of uh, uh, experiences. It's, and I, I'm very grateful. I never thought that I would go through it and I've grown a lot. Um, I have grown closer to myself as well to have this self-concept and that is a very important thing for, for life and, and for you to develop professionally. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Oh yeah, like, like, do you think like your experiences like growing up kind of helped you prepare for Miss Universe or like, oh, in a moment I prepared more than the way I grew up? That's an interesting question. I definitely believe that all the things that I did before coming into the platform, I was doing my master's degree, I was developing a career in the international community as a diplomat and in the international relations industry, that definitely helped build the performance and, and the car that I would present when I stepped up as Miss Universe Puerto Rico. And it's actually something that I still carry with me in whatever that I do. Now that I'm developing as an actor, it's also something that I know gives a lot of strength and power to my profile. You know, when people mm -hmm. read that, oh, she speaks these amount of languages. And before that, she uh, obtained a master's degree in intercultural mediation. She has work here and there. So it's funny because I was developing in that career, in that industry, not thinking ever that it would be an amazing tool and, and my main, you know, presentation card for this industry. So I feel lucky and I, I feel surprised as well by how life goes, right? You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you set up on a plan and on a dream and that doesn't work. So you find and you reach another dream and then all of a sudden that dream sort of brings you back to what you always wanted to do. And that was my case. So to answer your question, I would say yes, uh, but in a very surprising way. I did not expect that all the things that I did and went through, uh, yeah, at the university will actually lead and become a source of inspiration and, and strength for all these things that I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Like growing up, like you never anticipate in what you're doing in life as you get older. Like, like I'm only 16 years old and I never anticipated in doing these type of things. Never. I was like, I was always the type of person that loves entertainment wise and all of those things that involves entertainment, sports, whatever, but I never like imagine doing something in entertainment type of wise type of yeah. things and that was so shy growing up but like what would you like you describe like your younger self in a way like what oh, would you um, i love this question i would say i was very shy as well and oh. very creative i was always uh either painting or uh, making bracelets and earrings. And my parents were always very supportive of that. I remember I also went through photography when I was your age. I found, uh, you know, I fell in love with black and white photography. It is something that I still do today. So definitely a very creative childhood and a very free childhood. You know, there was a lot of freedom that our parents, I have a big brother, our parents gave us. They would always tell us, you need to do what makes you happy. And you need to make sure that whatever makes you happy, then you go and train to become the best at it. So definitely a lot of creativity and freedom would define mm -hmm. the childhood that I had. Definitely. I would say the exact same thing. He's growing up, I he's like, I used to have a creative mind, I would say. He's like, even now, like whatever it's like photography, like I used to like I love taking pictures. Whether yeah. it's like at my brother's games or it's left in general, I love taking pictures. And like whenever I have an actual camera, I remember like like one of my brother brother's 
teammate's mother, like my brother played baseball was um brother or whatever growing up. And I remember her asking like, oh, can you take pictures for me at, at the same for the game? I'm like, oh yeah, sure. And I just remember like with taking pictures, I don't know why, but like, I never knew I had like a photography sense until like maybe last year. And now wow. like, every time I hold like a camera, like an actual camera or whatever it's on my phone, I'm like, I'm loving this. So <laughs> it's, it's like, I yeah, know it's like a probably like, a stupid hobby, but it's like, it's something that like, where we're taking pictures for someone, it's like, whenever they see those pictures, it's a core memory for them to live when they're yeah. old. It is, it is a beautiful thing. I love photography. Uh, I think especially what black and white, it really shows you the details that usually you don't see if they're just normal color. And one of the things that I love about hobbies, you know, is that you don't necessarily have to be great at it. You know, it's just yeah. these things that you do because you enjoy doing them and they bring you joy. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. Like, uh, you can speak Spanish, English, and French fluently, which is crazy. Like, I can only <laughs> speak English fluently. I can imagine speaking three of them fluently. But, like, if, like, people or listen to this episode are just speaking English and, and curious to listen to any Spanish or French words, can you at least, can you say at least one or one of Spanish or French word in case people are curious? In yeah, of course. I can present myself in Spanish and French if that's okay. Will that work? Yeah, of <laughs> okay. Pues mi nombre es Estefanía Soto. Soy puertorriqueña. Tengo 31 años y actualmente estoy en Los Ángeles desarrollándome como actriz luego de haber pasado por la plataforma de Miss Universe Puerto Rico y el Miss Universe en general y luego de haber formado una carrera también en la diplomacia y relaciones internacionales. En francés, bonjour a tous, je m'appelle Estefania Soto, je suis portoricaine, j'ai 31 ans. Je suis actuellement à Los Angeles, California, en train de développer euh, mes compétences en tant qu'actrice. Et ça, après avoir passé pour le Miss Universe Puerto Rico, le Miss Universe, et ça, après avoir développé mes compétences hein, dans l'académie, l'université, dans le monde diplomatique. Voilà! <laughs> oh my God, that was so good! Like, did, like, were you, like, were you growing up, did you speak Spanish? Like, or does, like... Spanish? Okay, so, so in Puerto Rico, our first language is Spanish, so mm -hmm. that's my first language. At school, we usually learn English, so that's how I learn English. And then um, I wanted to be an interpreter. And I decided to do a bachelor's degree in foreign languages, in French Ooh. specifically. And that's how I know French. So up Ooh. to today, I have a certificate of French. My level is C1, which is almost uh, like mother tongue or main tongue. Uh, so yeah, it was just uh, wonderful learning languages and learning about different cultures and how people perceive life depending on where they come from and the language that they speak. The language that we speak really determines a lot of how we how we perceive the world around us. Just so to to be able to have access and to understand three different perspectives linguistically speaking, it's amazing. It's amazing, and I love it. <laughs> Like I actually took French as well. The last like two years, I took French as well. I'm can now, you like, present oh, yourself? Can you say something? I can't. I can't present myself honestly. Like I'm horrible. <laughs> like I can present myself, but I can say like, something like some words in Spanish, like "hola" or something. But it's like I can't like say like a sentence in uh -huh. Spanish or French. I can only like say like a small like wording type of thing, like "hola," like "hi" or something. You know. Yeah, but I'm like, hopefully I can actually present myself in next year because I'm taking Spanish next year. Ooh, next nice. Year, new year. So hopefully I can actually present myself in the coming year. But yeah, yeah I think once I actually get fluent, I'll let you know. But like, yeah, so please do. I think it's amazing. I think everyone should try and learn at least another language. Uh, it opens a lot of doors. I know I'm talking about, you know, this philosophical thing of understanding how people perceive the world through languages. But professionally speaking, it, it will open a lot of doors for many people. So if you can get that one checked, oh, it will be great. <laughs> yeah, and like with especially the United States, like the United States has a lot of like Spanish speaking people. Yeah. And like with um 
with when I took French added to my courses, I remember people asking like, "Why would you take French?" Like, I was like, "It's the United States, and people around you usually take speak Spanish." I'm like, "Might as well try something different, right?" And like different, yeah, yeah, of course. You try something different. Like, if if it's I don't like, it, I can go to Spanish. You know, just try to do something different, and try and try to learn something new rather than. You know, may never know. I can always go to France or someone that speaks French and use it. You know, yeah, it's always definitely you can use it. Definitely. And like in 2022, your cast as Camila in Fox's Fantasy Island season two. Like, how would you basically describe Camila? Camila is a free spirited 30 year old Spanish girl. She loves life, she loves arts. And she is going through her experience, discovering life and, you know, um, trying to understand the steps that she wants to take. Actually, she is the fantasy of another character of that episode. So it's also interesting to see how she was perceived by this other character. It was amazing playing Camila. You know, it's Mateo, right? It's Mateo, yeah. Mateo is this guy that's getting married and he goes to the island with his pals and he's just, you know, he's about to get married, second guess, you know, he has cold feet and he's just thinking about this girl that he met a couple of years back in Spain, Camila, and then the island gives him the opportunity to, to meet her again and to, yeah, and to know her a little bit more. I cannot say anything else. You should all while the, watch the episode, but it was fun. It was amazing. It was my first experience uh, on set. And it was the experience that really confirmed that I enjoy a lot acting, which is one of the reasons why I decided to make a move to LA right now. Ooh, you live in LA currently? I am in LA for a couple of months. I will be going back home from Puerto Rico, but I'm already contemplating uh, making a big move to, to Los Angeles. So yeah, I think that it's Los Angeles will be very soon my second home. Ooh, Los Angeles is the best place. It's one of my favorite places ever. Like in whatever really? Los Angeles, like it's just like, this like, it's just beautiful down there. I can't explain you like how much I love Los Angeles. Like this Los Angeles, like, it's entertainment, film studios and history yeah. and the celebrities, of course, film studios. This is like, it's like, whenever I'm down there, I'm like, this is my place I need to be every single day. <laughs> like, like, even though like, I literally try to convince my parents to let me go down there for college or something. They're like, no, you can't yeah. go down there. But it's like, California is just like, every time I go down there, I feel like a different person for some reason. Yeah, it is a, a nice place. And definitely, if you're interested in the industry, it's it's a place to be, I'd say. Oh, right. Exactly. And like, with your relationship with Camila and Mateo, like, do you think like, it, like, are you coming back? Are you just, were you just sticking in season two or you come back for, is there like a season three coming? uh no actually this is only the this will be the last season season two and my character camila was a character that only popped up for that one episode oh gotcha like what like what would if you could describe camila and mateo's relationship what would you describe it in in a couple I mean, if people oh. haven't watched the show of course it's a uh... It's a relationship based on a fantasy, you know? Oh, I yeah, think the that... title Fantasy Island, right? <laughs> yes. And also because, you know, a lot of people, a lot of us have had this experience of traveling the world and uh, meeting amazing people from other cultures during that trip. Um, and I've heard many, many stories, many love stories of friends that were in Italy or Spain or France. And they're like, oh, I met this guy or, oh, I met this girl from this other country. And this is just a beautiful experience, a uh, very attractive idea of, you know, getting to know someone that's not from your culture that speaks another language. Um, so I would say Camila and Mateo represent that experience, which is also, uh, you know, an experience that allows you to get to know yourself a little bit more in depth. In case of Mateo, he is a character that was supposed to get married and going back in time and meeting for the second time, Camila gave him an opportunity to realize what he really had in hands. Uh, so at the end, of course, he decides to still get married, but it's a, it's a good moment. It's a good, um, 
experience where people, you know, they get to see only one side of the person that they just met, but there might be a lot of other sides to that person that they don't necessarily are aware of. So yeah, it's a, it's an interesting relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if it's like a love, like a friendship or a love story that's occurred in a different country. Like, I feel like I like most love stories happen in a different country when someone's traveling. It's honestly like the best relationship if you ask me. If someone met in a different country and they basically travel together and do everything together since then. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, I actually have had the opportunity to date, date a guy from the Netherlands for five years. And it is Ooh. amazing, you know, that exchange of cultures and perspectives. And it's a beautiful thing to know that, you know, in that sense, there are usually no barriers in terms of, you know, just relating to people. It's a very beautiful experience. Mm hmm for sure. And, like, since you started acting in 2021, like, how do you think, like, you have kind of grown as an actor in the past, like, three years? Wow, definitely, definitely. Um, it's become more and more clear to me that I need to give a lot of my time in this training. It takes a lot of work, a lot of depth to understand where you're standing and to understand how to approach a character. There's a lot of vulnerability that you need to be comfortable with. There's a lot of openness that you need to be comfortable with when you're on stage. Um, I think that the biggest uh, learning or teaching for me right now has been that one. I, I've, I was very lucky to be able to, to get that uh, role for Fantasy Island. It was my very first role, like I said, and I had just started taking acting classes. So I'm very proud of myself. I'm very proud that I was able to be present in that audition and, you know, go for it. Um, and sometimes I think, okay, I'm, I'm already okay because I did this Fantasy Island thing. But no, there's uh, I'm currently taking acting classes and clearly it is a long way. Um, it is a very courageous thing to do. I think a lot of actors, we all have other options in terms of what we could do professionally and still we choose to do this. So that also takes a lot of courage. And yeah, there's a lot of patience that you need to develop as well. I'm just very excited where I am right now. I'm very excited to keep growing because I definitely have a lot more to learn and to grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something you should be proud of is that like when you see yourself a couple of years ago when starting out in this field, you're like, well, I have no idea what I'm doing. But when you see that kind of things you started, this is like, when you reflect on those past and when you're growing, it's just like something you should be grateful for and how far you came and from the last couple of years in terms of the acting. Definitely. And also with uh, going through the Miss Universe, Puerto Rico and Miss Universe in general, it really allowed me to develop uh, many, many things. And it did take time, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's just a, a thing of life, you know? It doesn't matter if you're in the film or entertainment industry or the fashion industry or you're a doctor or i don't know a lawyer or a chef or whatever there's always a process of growth and learning that takes a lot of time for which you need a lot of patience so it's been good i guess i'm living life <laughs> mm -hmm, for sure and like you are very passionate about women's growth like in your perspective like how can like w women grow as a person uh, to me, I think one of the biggest uh, realizations that I've had for the past years is the importance of your self-concept. The platform of Miss Universe is pretty much one of the only platforms that I know of that allows women to put their focus on themselves. Mm -hmm. If you're at work, you always have to be working. Or if you're in a modeling world and that's it, then you always have to just, you know, do the modeling. But there's not really space to converge the two. So with Miss Universe, I really felt the freedom to be completely who I was. Meaning, you know, being attracted to these intellectual things and uh, the university degrees that I got and what I was doing before. But also embracing the fact that I always loved modeling and that it was okay. And it was a process of getting to know myself and constructing that self concept of who you are. What are the things that are important to you? What are your values? When you're clear on your self concept, it is way easier to grow because oh, you, 
yeah, you can easily identify the path that you need to take in order to reach that goal. And I would say that will be the most important, just taking the time to look into yourself and have a clear view of your self-concept that will definitely guide you and give you a lot of light in all any any kind of experience that you go through life. Mm -hmm. Because like with women, like in terms of growing, like they often probably think about like, how can I really grow as a person? Like in terms of work or individually mental health or like a family well-being or whatever that reason may be like sometimes it can just be very difficult for a woman to grow as a person and yeah. like it can it's very difficult at times especially if like you want to change and become a better person like there are many resources like a therapist or maybe meditation to help grow as a person i know meditation and or maybe um writing your thoughts down in a journal or something like those type of things will help you so much i know meditation has helped me so much as a person like whatever those in like those uh, resources might help you like it's like as long as you tr at least try to get that done and try to like put the work in whether it's like 10 minutes a day or 15 minutes a day or at least put some time in between work or school or your um your schedule like just put that time in make that time in for yourself as a person instead of yeah. stressing yourself out for work yeah definitely especially because now there's so much so much pressure for us women to be independent and empowered mm -hmm. and to be professionals and leaders that it's very easy to forget that aspect of the interiority of who you are the most vulnerable part it is very difficult to be able to answer very simple questions like what makes you happy or makes you sad uh what are your values it is easier for a lot of us women to answer a political or socially charged question because we train to be intellectuals to show people that we are women and we are smart but we forget that part of just resting we forget the part of taking care of our souls from within which is mm -hmm. the simplest things of just, you know, going to the movies or painting your nails or having a conversation with your best friend. And that I think takes a lot more courage than just developing intellectually. And we forget that. For me, the most important thing is to have those two well balanced, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, develop yourself as an intellectual, smart, independent woman, but make sure you're also nourishing your soul with the simplest things of life, you know, which are, the things that a lot of people rather not pay attention to because they put us in a very vulnerable uh, situation that we don't like people to see. So if you if you're able to openly nourish those two, I think you will grow beautifully. Oh, yeah, definitely. And like, how can people support women to grow, whether it's like your family, best friend or um, or just your loved one trying to support people going through a rough time and willing to grow? Yeah, I think I will always think of education as the first step for any kind of person to understand what are the needs of women, uh, specifically depending on where they are and where they want to develop themselves. Um, in a lot of moments, I think giving words of affirmation, support, like verbally supporting women, it's one of the easiest ways to tell a person and a woman, you know, I'm here, I believe in you. Um, so yeah, and also starting to believe that women are capable of being leaders. I think we have so many examples right now and there's no mm -hmm. doubt that we are capable of doing great, great things. So just integrating that in every single aspect of your thoughts, I think it's the first step to, to you know, support women's growth. Mm -hmm, definitely, that is so well said. It's like when people are supporting women, I know with women it can be very doubtful because like when like women got years later were given the right to vote in the united states and yeah. men were really like that like to see how much like women had fought to be equal and stuff and it's still not equal all, well you guys it's better than years ago but it's still like a lot of work we need to put into actually um women to get treated equally like the women's soccer team we had to go to court to get paid equally to the men's soccer team and yeah. stuff so it's like it's so much work but things are getting better even though it, it might not seem out that way but it's like with women's growth like 
women's growth will make us feel better if men are also supporting us as well as people. Yeah, that's a very important aspect of it. And I think we are in a good place right now. There's a lot of change that still needs to come. But I think the difference now is that there is a lot more awakening from the communities, from the societies to see where things are lacking and a willingness to understand how to get these things that are lacking definitely is a discussion that everyone needs to have. It's not only about women supporting women, it's about men and everyone in general supporting everyone. But mm -hmm. yeah, uh, usually we talk about women's growth and we leave men on the side and especially people that are already where they are, that are already uh, taking advantage of uh, special treatments or leadership positions, you know, important men. People that are there already can do a lot by, you know, bringing all the other people that are not there yet. So I think that's the case for men. There's a lot of men that I've been able to work with that are very aware of that and that are willing and, and you know, super interested in supporting women. So that's also been lovely to see. Mm -hmm, it truly is. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on the podcast. You are seriously amazing. I love getting the chance to chat with you today. And I really appreciate you taking the time. Everyone, um, thank you so much for listening, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode as much as I did. And thank you so much for taking the time. It is so lovely to meet you. Thank you, Kylie. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye.